This episode of Shillmaster is sponsored by Dollar Beans, your favourite can of beans shipped to you every day at the low, low price of a dollar. Get that great fresh feeling every morning with Dollar Beans. Goes with any meal, can be any meal. Dollar Beans. Give them a go! Uh, vegan monster would have been a better rip. Hello, and welcome back to Shillmaster. One hell of a vacation that was. It's great to be back on episode 8089. Let's find out what's been going on while I've been away. So, while I've been in Falaraki soaking up Euroculture with my puggle, hi Tard, there's been a whole thing from fans of The Last Jedi who've raised over 400 million IOU dollars to remake The Last Jedi. I know this is a divisive issue and a lot of you want to know what I think. Well, here it is. No beating around the bush. Nothing like that. The Last Jedi is obviously one of the best films I've ever seen. Deeply flawed, but brilliant. Like a flawed diamond. That is also brilliant. But flawed. But brilliant. But flawed. But I also totally understand where the basement fans are coming from. And listen guys, if you're really serious about doing this, my friend Vincent D'Onofrio would totally help. He could do lights. He has his own truck. Well, his dad has a truck. In other news, Viggo Mortensen bought the Hobbit he wrote on the Lord of the... What's that saying? Uh, in the Lord of the Rings. And they've start, finally started to film Avengers 4. Phew. I'm very relieved about that. I can't wait for... Who, who's going to be in that? Tony Stark? He's a great character, isn't he? Will Glenn come back? Food for thought. Oh, what's that, Fabio? Oh, some breaking news. Well, how exciting. Uh, often on Chill News we have breaking news because we're journalists. Oh, wow, people are reacting to Ant-Man and the Wasp, and they love it, as do I, because it's a great film, probably the best I've ever seen, actually. Really, I mean, really. <laughs> it's got a big, um, uh, Ki you know Kiki from Friends? Her boyfriend's the dude, and he's really big. It's great, I mean, it's really, and like he's Ant-Man, you think, it's so tiny. Oh, so Ant-Man and the Wasp is a great film. You should check out my other videos on it. How Ant-Man and the Wasp surpassed my expectations, which were already very high, by the way. That isn't part of the title. And Ant-Man and the Wasp post credit scene discussion. Asterix spoiler warning. Asterix. Now, I want to use this opportunity to let you know that Ant-Man and the Wasp is what we in the industry often refer to as a tentpole movie. I know all sorts of industry people. One of them are Culkins, even. It's something film journalists like myself can get behind before it comes out and really hype up and frenzy over when it does come out. A broad definition of a tentpole movie uh, might well be a movie that has a very big budget and is expected to do or does really well. So well in fact that it becomes so important to the studio that's making it that they essentially move everything around it and... Yeah, alright Fabio, that's close enough. The idea is, is that you separate these tentpole movies so you have a constant next big project. These tentpoles carry the studio, as a tentpole carries a canvas. See, we're all about learning here on Shill News. And Beans. Studios do other stuff in between tentpoles too, I guess, whatever. Much like holidays, you don't want two tentpoles going too close next to each other. No one would buy a Valentine's Day gift if Christmas Day was a day or two after. I'm assuming. But with Ant-Man, it's like you've got an industry standard tentpole, but a Marvel standard hammock. It's a Marvel movie, and Marvel movies are very, very successful because they've got great talent and are really original and very emotional and one of a kind. But also, they're structured to be centred around their own tentpoles. Tentpoles that narratively tie stuff together, but also act as a super tentpole. And that's the Avengers series. Nailed it. Why have the audience wait for three years to watch another great movie? Well, sometimes you have to make it. But in the meantime, you can get great secondary tier content at first tier standards from Marvel. And what's the secret to making great profit and audience satisfaction like Marvel? Make movies that don't suck. Speaking of secondary tier content... Check out my podcast! So you have industry standard tent poles acting as Marvel's low points, and Marvel's high points acting as unobtainable beacons of profitability and audience satisfaction. Obviously, they're one and the same. I mean unobtainable until the Dark Universe really kicks off. Oh, and I guess whatever Sony's doing. What's Sony doing? 
until the Dark Universe kicks off, I guess. I can't wait for Russell Crowe to, you know, like, be, you know, be all like, bah. Seriously, though, I know it's a tangent, but I mean, that Bride of Frankenstein movie looks really good, doesn't it? I mean, that's exactly what the kids have been uh, saying that they want on their um, uh, Blackberries. This is how other studios position their content, too, and other entertainment industries, and it's not entirely inorganic. What's interesting, too, is when studios shift their tent poles around so as not to interfere with rival tent poles, almost like they're not competitors at all, but jolly good friends. No one's talking about cartels, okay, or syndicates. No one said the word syndicate or racket, all right? It takes a lot of time to make a tentpole movie, okay? Not every movie can be both a bastion of film art and mass appeal. Not every movie can be a Karate Kid reboot or the Smurfs. And sometimes you have to put out your Aaron Eckhart movie every now and then, you know. And, yeah. It's your job as a, as a, a lover of, uh, uh, of cinema to go and see the, that stuff. Even if you don't want to. But you should want to, because it's great. The Aaron Eckhart thing. Bride of Frankenstein. It's great. Anyway, I just wanted to drop some knowledge on you. It's not filler. In other news, while I've been away, Roseanne is now some sort of racist. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Check out my new roundtable with Channel Hatred, Mr. Recap, and Mr. Recap's Girlfriend about Arnold Schwarzenegger films that I like. Free for all my Patreons. Also, don't forget to turn off Adblock, or are you some sort of communist? Show everyone you know what's up on Twitter. Hashtag I believe Viggo Mortensen would be a better Rick in The Walking Dead than Andrew Lincoln. Also, let me know what you guys think. At least give me some ideas for the next episode. Ciao! Not now, Mum. I'm making a new dinosaur video for all my fans. There. Uploaded. What? What eight-second black screen?